All right, guys, I want to show you some little thing I made at the beginning of the lockdown. Essentially a trap beat for the verses and a Linkin Park kind of chorus for the choruses and I I wanted to have this challenge with myself into mixing two different music genres and uh, I did this in the first three days of lockdown and now I'm I reopened it and I think it it sounds pretty cool I mean, I got so excited at the beginning and I worked on it for three days straight. I wanna show you a little bit around the project. I started with the, I decided to start with the chorus and it's essentially a drum beat, guitars, these two rhythm guitars, just open chords. And this lead guitar with just a little melody to make it more interesting and some piano with a nice reverb some scenes that goes like this And I have a sub bass. I don't know if you can hear it from your phone or your PC, but it's super cool. It goes like this. Super aggressive. It, it really makes a difference. And to start the whole thing, I use some reversed cymbals and some reversed of the lead guitar which together sounds like this then I go into the trap thing and it's mainly an arpeggiator that I made which is this one I love it and for the first bit introducing the trap the trap part I filtered it and cut all the high end so it sounds like this it's a little more secluded and uh, I did the same for the kick and the snare. I mean, the snare sound, the trap snare sound like this. And in this bit, I filtered it and it sounds like this. You hear it. So when it comes in, it feels like it's in another room, if you know what I mean. Then I liberate the high end. It is really cool because it opens up. I I also use some brass, which is super cool, super cinematic. And I also add a little uh, loop here with some bells that 
with the arpeggiator it gives it a lot more expressivity expression I don't know what I'm saying and uh, yeah then the I had open and close no this is open and yeah all together it makes uh, this really trap ah the bass goes along with the kick now a little stop here to make it more interesting this is cool it's I had a vocal sample here. I don't know. It it sounded cool. And I I reversed uh, I had roll. Okay, this one it goes like this. I reversed it, and I used the fade in to have this effect. You hear it in solo like this a, a lot of little little uh, things that make it more interesting I use this super long riser to introduce the chorus again makes you feel like something good is about to happen and then for the first chorus I use just a big pause and yeah we go we go into the verse again this time it starts right away I mean right away with the I end I have this little pause here with reverse symbols again and then when I go to the second uh, chorus I'll do it differently nothing is gonna stop this time and the whole thing is gonna be connected with the drum roll to make it different from the first one and to make it more connected and I mean you know what's gonna happen because you already heard it before so now I wanted to make it more impactful <laughs> I like this this drum roll because it has the closed hi hat in the middle, which is a thing that I really love. Like like this in solo, and super cool. And yeah, I forgot to mention that I also use some piano layering in the in the verse as well, just like this. You can hear it with everything in context. You can write so, I mean, some really cool vocal lines on this, I think. I also used a uh, clean guitar in the second verse to make it different. It's super super low in volume but it's cool yeah i forgot about that it's a lot of reverb just single notes listen if you hear it with the piano i mean it's gonna be a low volume but you can really hear it it's cool and I, I'm thinking now I can even use this for the end of the song I can put it in the ending to create this 
cool effect before the song ends. Yeah, another thing that I want to show you, and it's my favorite of this track, is that I wanted to repeat the last chorus. Um, I wanted it to last longer, and uh, I wanted something to change. So after two, two repetition, it goes like this. <laughs> I had the volume high for the clean guitars. Why I love this? Okay, what happens here? It happens that the the main guitar stop sounding. And it's been replaced with the arpeggiator that's in the verse. So you make this, you 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 make this kind of closure feeling that everything is completed with the last chorus. And this arpeggiator, I put it on the track of the guitar, so it has the distortion and everything. So it sounds more rock than than the one that's in the verse, and it sounds like this. Super cool in my opinion. I also added a uh, higher octave to make sure that it cuts through the guitars and the drums. I also added in this last section the i hats that we had in the chorus, but I make I made two of them and I pan them super hard so they sound like this. with the drums and with the arpeggiator so everything together it makes this massive effect I wanted to make the last chord even longer to create some expectation for, for the end. Uh, let me show you. So I used uh, I, I used the last song the last chord and I made it made it longer but to do that I I didn't want to repeat the same chord like three times so I made some variation in the in the chord and I used a sus4 and a seventh to end it Sound, sounds like this so I use these notes adding them to the chord and makes it more like you have this feeling that something is going to happen because you want to feel the chord resolving. Tension and release. I love it. And then to, to close everything, I reuse the filtered appreciator that I had at the beginning. brass just because yeah and that's it I wanted to show you this guys just what I've been doing the first three days of lockdown I mean two months ago yeah I'm this track is pretty cool super short I don't know it's interesting I don't know if I'm gonna use it but it was a lot of fun <laughs>